Daddy of the Rome. And no sound ah no sound well we best start again hadn't we <laughs> that's what you get for muting yourself so shabbat shalom shabbat shalom i'm lee <laughs> this is blood of the land ministries this is blood of the land ministries which means we get stuff wrong and we mess up you should so, know that by now you should know that by now and maybe I hope... maybe we should have kept it muted the whole way through and then told people it was a problem with their sound that could have worked couldn't it well, let's start again, shall we? Ah, so look, she's telling us no sound. <laughs> Rivka is telling us no sound. <laughs> oh, we've not started very well tonight, have no, we? No, but they love us anyway. Oh, we love you too. Thank okay, you very much, Rivka. So it's always a pleasure to see you here. What we're going to do is we're going to start again. Start again. And we're going to first say a very special Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much for waiting for us. It was, it was very, it was lovely to see you for that comment. And it was just wait. It was lovely, honestly. So thank you very, very much. Thank lovely. you very much. Okay, and we're going to say Shabbat Shalom to Lee and James. Shabbat Shalom, Lee and James. <laughs> Brilliant to see you here. Thank you. And to Becky and Stephen. Shabbat Shalom, Becky and Stephen. And people, you will get used to us messing up. And to our beautiful Rivka. It's always a pleasure to see you with us, Rivka. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm going to be feeling all there now because we messed up again i just can't believe it it's like normal for me and you well so let, let's just be honest though i am not in control of the uh technology so technically i haven't done anything wrong well no do you not think everybody everybody do you not think that lee maybe should be in charge of the technology and stop leaving everything to me well i'll have to change seats then and then it's it's pretty confusing i won't be able to reach my shofar and <laughs> You can't do that to me. I've just got used to this layout. Okay. If you didn't, we think there was something wrong. See, people are used to this mistake mm. business for me. If it went perfect. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to Shell. Oh, Shell, lovely to see you. To Laura Lee, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Laura Shalom, Lee. Laura Lee. To Lynn, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. So now let's try again, shall we? Like... <laughs> do I have to say Shabbat Shalom again? <laughs> I'm Lee. Uh, no. no we, we okay, just... no, we're not going from there. Okay. Okay. No. So as many as you of you know, myself and Lee have become more involved with another ministry, Heart of the Tribe and River and the Ravens that mm -hmm. are, are, are in the comments. Words didn't want to come out my mouth then. Um, and tomorrow, Lee will be heading a new presentation that started last week, and it's called Let's Talk Torah. If you watched it, it was brilliant. I watched it with the children. It was really, really good. So, Lee, do you want to tell us what that's all about and what we've got to look forward to tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Um, so, tomorrow I'll be joined by Robert Wagner, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, if any of you's watched Heart of the Tribe this Wednesday and watched his Mercy Poured Forth. Yeah, you got it right. Got the name right. Um, you, you, you'd know that he has such a such a heart for you and he's, he's got so much wisdom in there and, and knowledge. And, and me and him have both had similar walks in our life might we say we, we both didn't grow up in the church so i'm really looking forward to working with him there it was a great show last week with shell and tomorrow we'll be on uh, week 41 of the torah portion which is pink hass try my best to say that and pronounce it <laughs> uh, which which is a, it's a great story um so many so many lessons in there really and i've really enjoyed going throughout this week and we also will be looking at first kings 19 with eliyahu and again, some wonderful lessons in there. So really looking forward to it. We'll be going through line by line. And it is long, but 
it's it goes fast. It's very enjoyable. And I thank you all for who watched last week. Uh, your comments were great. I, I struggled a bit keeping up with the comments last week, I'll admit. But Catherine, my lovely wife, is going to try babysit. Six children. He's going to be looking look after there. kids and doing comments. So hopefully, because there were so many lovely comments. I know Rivka, you were putting some great stuff forward last week, and I was um, I was getting a bit lost trying to read and trying to, you know, I'm a man. <laughs> Struggle to do more than one thing at a time. No comment. So, uh, but yeah, so I thank you all for your support and I hope you join us tomorrow if you're not busy. It's at uh, 3 p.m. UK time and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So. Yeah. So please join us. It'll be be great. So on Tuesday, uh, Catherine will be joining on Walking in the Word. So why don't you tell us about that? Well, that's a new presentation that we bring in with Lika Rivers, who's Between the River and the Ravens, and Shell of Heart of the Tribe. And it's a, like a women's talk panel. We're having different guests on with us every week. And this week we'll be talking about boundaries. So it's gonna, probably going to be a very, very good show. Um, and every week we'll look at something different and bring it all through that perspective of the word and yours lens and not our own. Well, try our best. No, I, I really enjoyed last week. And um, like you said, you didn't have any discussion really before about what you're saying but i loved how all of yours all your messages all incorporated and made one really like fluid full message and i really enjoyed it last week so i'm looking forward to this week thank you i'm looking forward to it too as i'm sure lee is um and lee for those who watch today or haven't watched mercy poured forth today was was great i really enjoy it. every day it's a great way to start your day or afternoon for us but today it was really it was such a such a great message that was brought forth and and i really did enjoy it so if you haven't had the chance to please watch listen to that watch it later no i will say lee had had myself personally in tears today with her beautiful story you know if you haven't seen it mercy poured forth on heart of the tribe absolutely gorgeous yeah uh, such a good really message beautiful. for us today as well that was brought through there i, I really uh it was it was it was great. It was it was lovely to listen to while preparing our Sabbath tea. Well, while Lee was preparing our Sabbath tea. I cook the Sabbath tea. And it takes me hours. So So Laura Lee is asking for some prayers there, everybody. If you could just lift her up for us, that would be fantastic. Mm. Thank you very, very yeah, much. Yeah, we're we should all be lifting each other up and being there to support each other. We are all that part of the body together in Mashiach. We are, and that's exactly what's trying to be achieved at Heart of the Tribe, that we become one in Messiah, one Mishkan, as Shell keeps saying. Yeah. Yeah. So much division at the moment, we just really need to... Bring people in unity, despite slight differences, we actually all can. Enjoying in love, which ties in today with what Lisa said, joy. Yeah. Honestly, go watch that. <laughs> Brilliant. Not now, though. You're not allowed to go anywhere now. <laughs> Okay, so I know we just lose all, all our watches. I know, yeah, we've told them to go and watch other things. No, don't do that. Okay, so now we have some big news for those who watch us on Lamb Network or any of the outlets that Lamb Network can um, post to. This will be our last show that streams to those places, however, this will not be our last show. For those who do watch on LAM and still wish to continue on with us, you will be able to find us in various places, starting with our own YouTube channel and Facebook group that lovely Shane Stokes and Sarah set up for us. Again, thank you. Such a blessing they are. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel or join us on our Facebook group and you will find this show there, same time, live every week. You will also be able to catch us this, this show on Heart of the Tribe YouTube channel. So click over to there and subscribe to that as well and their facebook and also we'll be on brighton and rumble and we're also having podcasts through spotify amazon apple and anchor uh, all under heart of the tribe and all the shows on heart of the tribe will be going on them so yeah the only places i'll be live though is the youtube and the facebook for now yeah and uh, the others will be uploaded afterwards so we hope to see you all there if you're watching us on that. Yeah, so Don't some we? great work being done behind the scenes there. So we thank all those involved. Yeah, and really, we really want to do want to thank Mark Smith at Lamb Network for giving us the, the opportunity to work on his platform. It's been wonderful, wonderful experience and a great learning time for us both, hasn't it? It certainly has. He's been nothing but hospitable to us. He's been nothing but open and helpful to us from that first, yeah. first, first chat with him. He's been there. Uh, been just so warm to us and we really can't thank him enough 
and it's it's not through any um bad feelings that this is happening it's just we need a bit more flexibility in our time schedule shall we say that that's the only reason that we are coming off there so we do thank mark so much we would never have been able to meet so many people i've heard speak so many people it wasn't for this opportunity they gave us and the, the encouragement that he gave us as well no he's he, mark smith is a true blessing and uh, uh, utmost respect for the man honestly yeah he's doing a lot of work for us for people so we thank him very much for that okay so do you want to lead us in some prayer before we get started yes i would love to thank you very much our father our abbey our yahweh we come to you in yahusha's name father we come to you humbly we come to you on our hands and knees. We come exalting you above all, just praising you and glorifying you for everything, Father. You are El Shaddai, you are the Aleph and the Tav, you are the creator of all things, and we thank you. We ask, Father, that you just be with each and every one of us. Just help heal us. Just help fill us with your Ruach, fill us with your Shalom and your love. Just help and not us fall to the wickedness and deceit of this world. Help us not feel in despair, in like we're in a pit that we can't get out of. But come to us, Father, and just help restore us, renew us. Make our cup overflow with your ruach, with your love, with your shalom, Father. Just give us that energy to proceed in this world, to continue in your word, just glorifying your name and showing that light to people. Father, we pray for all our brothers and sisters around the world, that need that healing, healing of their ruach, healing physically and healing in their homes. There are so many believers in your children, Father, that do not walk in unity with their families and every week, every day we pray for them. We ask that you just heal those bonds, that you circumcise those hearts, you fill those hearts with your word and your Torah and your love. Help them be united in your name, Father. Help them be a chad in you. There is no better joy than to walk in unity in your name and we just ask that you give these children of yours that help them not be alone father help them have fellowship help them be able to celebrate and welcome in and have the joy of your sabbath with their family just give them that comfort and that shalom and that love father we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us we thank you for the fellowship you've given us we thank you for the people that you've brought to us and how we can talk with them, Father. It's such a joy, it's such a blessing. And we just ask that you be with us always. We ask that the words that we say today are your words and they please you. Father, we thank you and we just ask that you protect and bless us all in these times. Amen. Amen. And if any of you saw me do a little uh, giggle there, it's because you can't hear it, I don't think. But our little girl just absolutely laughed her head off in the background while we were having a pray there. <laughs> Oh. Terrible. If you know what Lily Rose is like. Shabbat Shalom, Eileen. Shabbat Shalom, Eileen. Thank you very much for joining us. And James, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much. Oh, and certainly, amen, Lily. What a beautiful prayer. Okay, so I'm a little bit unprepared because I forgot to get my PowerPoint up properly. So I'll just quickly do that. So, now. Catherine, you are going to be speaking on what today? Yahuwah, Yira, which I hope I'm saying that right. And if I'm not, Yiri, I'm not. Yiri. Mm -hmm. Well. Yira. I'm going to say Yira. I don't really. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. I'm not Hebrew. I'm not <laughs> Greek. I just try my best to say these words. <laughs> well, yeah. happy prep day then, James. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you have a lovely Sabbath. And Shalom, Deborah. Oh, let me see if I can make that go quiet. I don't really know why that did that. Then. We're all over the place tonight, aren't we? It is. If it no. wasn't our last show, it would be our last show on Lamb. Because <laughs> of how it's going. Oh. <laughs> and it's such a lovely time, prep time, isn't it? Prep time, getting ready for the Sabbath, bringing it in. Such a joy. Rivka said I said it okay. So. I'm Rivka. Rivka. No, Rivka knows more Rivka than me. Rivka knows better. So thanks, Rivka. Okay. We're in a silly mood, clearly, aren't we? It must be those girls. It must be catching. I think okay. I'm a bit tired. 
Well, here we are. Yahua. Yeah, right. and it's only a short one I've got for you tonight. I can't say the same about the husband. Um, though. I don't think Nothing it's on there. screen. Oh, I need to add it, do I? Yeah. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Oh, if people did watch this time, they might not come back. <laughs> so it was the start in Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did try Avraham and said unto him, Avraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your Yahid, Yitzhak, whom you love, and get you into the land of Moriah. And offer him there as an ascending smoke offering upon mountains, which I will tell of you. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. And Yitshach, his son, and clave the wood for the ascending smoke offering and rose up and went into the place of which Elohim had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw a place and saw the place afar off and Abraham said unto his young men abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you and Abraham took the word of the ascending smoke offering and laid it upon Yitzhak his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both off of them both of them together and Yitzhak spoke unto Al Avraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for an ascending smoke offering? And Avraham said, My son, Elohim will provide himself a lamb for an ascending smoke offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which Elohim had told of him. And Avraham built an altar there and laid the word in order and bound it, shock his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Shabbat Shalom. And Avraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of Yahuwah called unto him out of the heavens and said, Avraham, Avraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do you anything unto him. For now I know that you fear Elohim, seeing you have not withheld your son, your Yahid, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for an ascending smoke offering. And in the steed of his sons. And Abraham called the name of that place Yahuwah Yireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of Yahuwah it shall be seen. And the angel of Yahuwah called unto El Abraham out of the heavens the second time and said, By myself have I sworn seven oaths, saves Yahuwah. For because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your Yahid, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand upon which the seashore and your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you obeyed my voice. OK, so today we'll be not looking at this story in every minute detail. But before we move on, I want to show you a few findings and give it its place because it's a really important special story. So this moment is the climax to Abraham's life. It is the moment that all his life trials and tests had led to. As the text indicates, this was once again a test. Genesis 22, 1, and it came to pass after these things that Elohim did try Abraham. Let's note that there was never going to be any human sacrifice. Oh, we're so glad you could be here with us live too. And don't worry, you just missed us messing up at the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so just before this event takes place and Abraham is asked to sacrifice his only son, 
to Sarah. Obviously, he had Ishmael. Abraham is told to send his firstborn son, Ishmael, away. Abraham, on receiving the command to give Isaac as a burnt offering, did not hesitate. He did as he was commanded without question, despite just how much it must have been torture to him to set out the next day. We see Yah says he will bless Abraham because he obeyed him. It's very important, that obedience. So if we compare comparison of this event and Yahusha's crucifixion so with Isaac in Genesis 22 4 that on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off and so 1 Corinthians 15 4 and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so it took him three days to get there Yahushua was in the grave for three days and the lad will go yonder and worship and, and i and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you and that's in the isaac story in yehokanon or john 13 36 shimon kepha said unto him adonai whether do you go yahushua answered him whether i go you cannot follow me now but you shall follow me afterwards and we see here that it was just the just isaac and ish and isaac and Abraham that went up and just, and just, Yahushua that went with the father, to the father, the father and son went together. It was just the father and son and no one could follow. And amen between the river and the ravens. Amen, Lee and James. Okay. Abraham. Shalom, Tammy. Great to see you here. Abraham took the wood of the ascending smoke offering and laid it upon Yitshak, his son. John nineteen seventeen. And he bearing his cross went forth into the place called the place of the skull. And, you know, so we see Isaac carried the own wood that he would be sacrificed upon. Yahushua carried the wood that he would be sacrificed upon. And bound Yitshak, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Mark 15, 3. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. So we saw Yitshak. He did not make any um oh, what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> he didn't try and fight it he accepted it yahusha didn't try and fight it he accepted it as exactly what you were trying to exactly say exactly yeah. what i'm trying to say thank you very much a willing sacrifice. he's a willing sacrifice and for those who have read some other writings it that's made even more clearer he really was a willing sacrifice okay and I can't remember which book that's in and stuff, so I'm not I'm not going to say it. I think it's in Joshua, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think Jubilee gives us a it. date. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I wasn't sure. He didn't resist, eh, Ben Rivka? It's in this chapter that we have just read that we see Yah's provision in action. So, excusing all those other wonderful things we see in there, this is what we're focusing on. Yah's provision. Abraham is a faithful and obedient servant. He is willing to do all that Yah asks of him, even if that means his Yahid dying at his own hand. Abraham passes Yah's test and at that last moment is stopped and Yah provides him with a proper sacrifice in the form of a ram. Isn't it really interesting that Yah can sometimes test us until just before, just before the, the evil is about to happen and then he will step in. I don't like those kind of tests. <laughs> So shofars are made, and we all know what a shofar is. Lee gives it a good blow for us every week. Are made from ram's horns. It is interesting that it is a ram caught by its horn that Abraham sees when he hears the voice of the angel of Yahweh. Amen, Eileen. Oh, and Shabbat Shalom, lovely shell. I lovely to see you here, my dear sister. Okay, so if we consider Exodus 19, 16, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the shofar exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. It is the sound of the shofar that is used to represent the voice of Yah in this passage. And so 
It is by its horns that it was caught, and that sound that is made is Yah's voice. Lovely comment there from Lee. Do you want to read it out for me, please, Lee? Ram caught in the thorns by the horns, reflection of the crown of thorns worn by our Mashiach. Oh, that's a beautiful comparison. It certainly beautiful. is. You see so many comparisons, especially in this one chapter of Yahusha and his sacrifice and just and that's why I couldn't just skim over it but I've got to skim over it because yeah, I've got there's... other things to get to but it's beautiful you can see a shofar is Yah's voice and it you know his sacrifice was there in that Yah provided that sacrifice by something caught in the thicket it's just so beautiful it is isn't by it? the horn by the ram's horn. there's some things that when you first read it you you, you don't take into consideration maybe when you first come to scripture and you read these things oh, definitely Rivka thank you okay so here we have it in Hebrew Yahuwah Yireh okay Yahuwah sees or provides also symbolic name for Mount Moriah Yahuwah seeing or providing are one in the same whichever way we choose to interpret it Yah knows what we need because he sees all and fills that need he sees it fills it he provides for us there are many many times Yah provides and many different circumstances he provides in so in this study we are going to, to look at some of the different ways he provides for and cares for his people okay after the events of the previous chapter we see Yah's provision in action once again is in the it is in the form of a wife for Isaac. So in Genesis 24 12, and he said, Oh Yahweh Allah Adonai of Abraham, I pray, I pray you send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my Adonai Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I may I shall say, Let down your pitcher, I pray you, that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink and I will give your camels drink also. Let the same be that she, that you have appointed for your servant Yitshak, and thereby shall I know that you have showed kindness unto my Adonai. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rivka came out. He was born to Bethel, son of Milcha, the woman of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her picture upon her shoulder. And yes, Tammy, we are reading from the Sefer. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray you, drink a little water of your pitcher. And she said, drink, my Adonai. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have done drink. <laughs> and she hastened and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew it for all his camels. So you can see he provided a wife. Yahuwah cares for us in every way. And if it is his will, he will provide a husband or wife for his people. After all, Yah made sure Adam was fed and then made sure he wasn't alone by providing him with Eve. Genesis 2.21 And Yahuwah Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which Yahuwah Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto her man. And we see that, you know, we saw it with with Rivka and Isaac that Yah wanted them to be married and therefore provided. And it is the same with Adam and Eve. Yah sees need and he provides it. Okay. So here in 1 Kings 17, and Eli Eliyahu the Tishbi, who was of the inhabitants of Gilad, and said unto have as Yahuwah Elahai of Yasharal lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, 
get ye hence and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Kerev that is before the Yarden. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the raven to feed you there. So he went and did according unto the word of Yahweh, for he went and dwelt by the brook Kirev that was before the Yarden. And the raven brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Here we see how Yah makes sure his servant is fed. The help comes from an unlikely source, a raven, an unclean bird. Deuteronomy 14.12 But these are they of which ye shall not eat, the eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey and the gleed and the kite and the vulture after his kind and every raven after his kind. I think that there is a lesson that we can learn here, that maybe we should not turn up our noses at help from those who do not follow Yah, and that maybe he can use anyone and anything to provide for and care for his people, despite how we may see them. Yah created them for. Okay. So we're in Kings again here now, this time chapter 17. And the word of Yahweh came to him saying, Arise and get you to Zareth, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. So he arose and went. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called. And it Sorry, I just lost where I was up to then. <laughs> and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray you, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray you, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As Yahuwah el lives, I have not had, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a curse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks. So I may go in and dress for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Eliyahu said unto her, Fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me, and after make for you and your son. For thus says Yahuwah Elahai of Yasharel, The barrel of meal shall not wise neither, not waste, neither shall the curse of oil fail until the day that Yahweh sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Eliyahu, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the curse of oil fail according to the word of Yahweh, which he spoke by Eliyahu. You know, it's so wonderful, isn't it, that no matter what, he feeds us. Even with the unclean, even with anything, he uses whatever he pleases. Amen, Tammy. And I think that's what between the river and the ravens con was as well, how you said you all can use anybody for us. Thank you, Lee and James. I'm glad you're getting some new things from this this evening. And I think I also think I'll mess up cost a bit of time there. <laughs> Amen, Eileen. One person, two ways of being provided for. The whole land was in famine and droughts. The lady he went to thought that her and her son would die, that there was no hope. She had given up, and in a split second, her life changed. Again, we're seeing right at the end point, she thinks there's no, no hope anymore. All the worry, all the stress had been for nothing. Even though there seemed no way Yah, Yah provided for his loyal servant and those that helped. Just as her food was about to run out, Yah sent Eliyahu or Elijah. He was first fed by the unclean and then by Yah's own. How there was enough food to last is not something we are given, but I can only imagine it was by a supernatural intervention that those vessels remained full without ever being filled. When we trust in Yah, he can turn what is a little into a lot. Nothing 
into something. Okay. Now we're in 2 Kings this time, chapter 4. Now there cried a certain woman of the woman of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha this time, saying, Your servant, my man, is dead, and you know that the servant did fear Yahweh, and the creditor is come to take him, my two sons, to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What have you in this house? And he said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels abroad of all of your neighbours, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons, and you shall pour out into all those vessels, and you shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, he brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. And they said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of Elohim, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debt, and live you and your children off the rest. This lady had lost her husband, a servant of Yah. The man he had owed money to were banging on the door, and I'm sure many of you have been there, telling her that her son would be took as a servant if she didn't pay up. All she had to her name was a jar of oil. Elisha, the man who had taken up the mantle of Elijah, told her to go to all her neighbours, get their jars and empty vessels, shut the door to her home and pour oil into all the vessels that she had gathered. That one jar of oil turned into many, and not only did she have enough to sell to pay the debtors, but she had enough for her and her children to live off too. Yah cares about our every circumstance, and he knows our every need. Sometimes he waits till the door is knocking before he intervenes, but he always intervenes. He is always there. He doesn't care what your circumstances, you cry out to him. And even if it's money problems, money troubles, he is quick and ready to answer all our prayers. But we must stay faithful, even when the door is knocking, or even when we're down to that last piece of bread. Now we're going to head over to the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah, and Yahushua, when he came out in Mark chapter 6, so much people and was moved with compassion towards them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd and he began to teach them many things and when the day was now far spent his talmudine came unto him and said this is a desert place and now the time is far past send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat he answered and said unto them Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He says unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go see, go and see. And when they knew, they said five and two fish. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his Talmudim to set before them. And the two fish divided he among them all, and they did eat, and all were filled. And they looked up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish, and they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men, plus the women and children. And I'll tell you what, there's so much we could go into in all of these different chapters, but I am just trying to focus on Yah providing for us. Yahushua had an army of followers behind him, all who needed to eat. Provisions were low, but Yahushua, instead of sending them away, provided for them. As we saw earlier with Elijah and the woman and Elisha and the jars of oil, Yah took what was a little and turned it into plenty. Yeah, amen, definitely. He 
provides for the birds, so of course he'll provide for us as well. We need to remember that wonderful scripture there. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're in Matthew 6.25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body which you shall put on. Is it not life more than food and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Elohim so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the other nations seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, to, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Shif sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In John 3.16 for Elohim so loved the world that he gave his yachid, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The ultimate provision was Yahusha. In the Tanakh, the blood of rams, lambs, oxes, etc. atoned for sin and paid the debt. When Yahusha died for us and his blood was shed, that debt was paid eternally for those who believe in him. And that belief is proven out in our commitment to obey his commandments. After all, faith, belief without works is dead. Hebrews 9, 12 and onwards, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Mashiach, who through the eternal Ruach offered himself without spot to Elohim, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. And that word purge it probably is like the one I was looking at last week, and it, to cleanse. And just before we finish here, we're going to have a quick look into the pictographs, okay? And we're going to, to be our last thing, and we'll move on to Lee's study. So, Yahuwah provides, Yera means provides or seeds, and we have a Yod, a Resh, an Aleph, and a Hey. Okay. So, Yod to work, Dresh, Prince, Aleph, Chief, and Hey revealed. Okay, the work of the Prince Yahusha and the Chief Yahua has been revealed. And when we think about how Yahusha was the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate provision in this word for provides, we actually see that his work, the work of the Father, the work of the Son was revealed and made the ultimate sacrifice. So how amazing is that this word, word reflects the very moment it was commemorating in this, that we could see a foretelling of the Messiah to come and what he would do for mankind. So we, this word in the day of Abraham spoke of what was to come. So I hope you all enjoyed that and you feel more empowered to trust that our Yahweh will provide every need that we could ever have and that we need not worry about a thing, but trust in him, lean not on our own understanding and walk in his ways, and he will provide for us. Oh, especially in it. I agree there. It was a beautiful word study. I absolutely love that picture you got there from that. And like you said, we do really need to lean 
on your and our understanding, and he will provide for us. Eileen saying that as well, and Rivka having many stories that she could tell us of y'all being there for her. And we need to be patient in these times as well. It's, it doesn't always come straight away. It's all in yours timing. Yeah. So we need to be... And if you're anything like me, you might get a little bit impatient sometimes and be like, where are you? But remember, <laughs> Abraham, when he had his... When his when he had his child, he was close yeah. to 100. When, um, yeah. They had to wait a very long time, didn't they? They did. Isaac was praying for 20 years for his children. For he, and... What did y'all do? He gave him double for his patience. He had Yaakov and Esau. He, so we made to remember to be patient. And I said, I agree. It was truly wonderful that I really thoroughly enjoyed that. It was a great way to forget about the start of the show. That was that was wonderful. <laughs> okay, so what do you have for us? Oh, I, I know if you've got enough time, but even if you don't, you do. So just go for it. <laughs> it was one of those last show. So I... We'll be talking about as being too far gone. Are you ever too far gone? That's what we're going to look at today. And this, we're, the world today is filled with so much wickedness. Amen. And I feel like, especially this past month that we've had, that this message has been on my heart for a while. It feels as though people are moving further and further away from Yahweh and his kingdom. Some of us have many. Oh, a minute. I just want to say hello to my mum and dad that are watching, but they're telling me they can't comment. So, shalom, mum and dad. Shalom. Shabbat, shalom. Thank you very much for joining us. Number one fan. <laughs> so, some of us have family members, friends, colleagues who are on this path of destruction. And personally, I do. I work with people that aren't on this path at all. Um. We have I, I even had members. a phone call today to see if I could work tonight. I'd say, no, I work, I can't work. It's the Sabbath. I can only work Sunday to Wednesday. I can't do Sabbath. So, and thank personally, you, Grand. Oh, thank me. you very much. No, thank you. And personally, in my family as well, um, can say it because she's never going to watch this. <laughs> I, my sister, is part of the Alphabet community. What one, of, one of the original letters might i say not one of these new ones but um yeah so you know i see her and we've tried to speak to her in the past and come from a place of love and obviously she took it the wrong way um oh james first time here so a very special shalom to you brother. shalom i thought i hadn't seen your name before it's great to have you with us if you don't mind let us know where you're coming from as oh, well yeah definitely it's not the last show james it's just no. the last show for people who watch on lab and they'll be able to find us on different out, you know, on Facebook, YouTube, like yourself, watching us on YouTube. Not the last show. Let's make that nice I and keep clear. saying that, yeah. Last show online. We'll still be streaming every Friday. Same nine time. Th same time, but probably diff different finish times each week. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll be on our YouTube channel and Heart of the Tribe's YouTube channel. So, yeah, so, sorry. I need to keep stop saying that. So, yeah, back to this. Then they're, yeah, they're living a life of sin, these people that we may know. And we have been warned and spoken of this time in Scripture before. 1 Timothy 1, 10 and 11, For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man-steers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious better of the blessed Elohim, which was committed to my trust. We see they follow after these, these words, contrary to sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachings, having itching ears, and they shall turn away from their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. And we definitely see that today, turned into turned to lies. You know, science now isn't being believed. They, but to, just simple biology is not being <laughs> believed. You look at Genesis, it told us, you are created man and woman. Nothing else. You are created woman for man. Nothing else. It's there in Genesis. It's there. And we have such absurdness these days. I'm sorry. I'm going to go off and want I need to stop. You do, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the second slide. <laughs> so, therefore, when we read the word, it would appear that there is no hope for these people. Yeah. When we see Revelation 20 verse 11 to 15 and i saw a great right 
white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face of the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and a sephirim was opened, and another sephir was opened, which is the sephir of life, and the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the sephirim according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the deaf and Sheol delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and Sheol were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the sephir of life was cast into the lake of fire. So James is in Texas. And oh, amazing. I, I think I think that some don't mind your little rant that you went on there. So <laughs> thanks, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just need to be careful these days what we say. Let's keep going. <laughs> you know, it's the world of free speech after all, isn't it? The world of free speech if you don't yeah. upset anybody, Not for hurt us. anybody's feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger warning needed for these. So Revelation 21 eight. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars should have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So we see there's seems like there's no hope. Ezekiel 18, 20, the soul that sins, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. And I know we spoke about these script, some of these scripts at the end of our show last week. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. It's quite clear. Ephesians 5, 5. For this ye know, that no whoremongers, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Mashiach and of Elohim. It continues as well, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor sodomy, nor abusers of themselves and mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. We keep seeing the same message. And even look in Isaiah 24, 5 and 6. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because they have transgressed the Torah, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore has the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. However, we know Yah is merciful. We know that Yah is just love. Yahweh Ahava, Yahweh is love. And Yah has told us that he does not rejoice in the punishment of the wicked. He is love, but he's a good and fair judge. He is, he is. But Ezekiel 18, 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked shall die, says Adonai Yahweh, and all they shall return from his ways and live. Amen. Ezekiel again, same chapter, verse 32. If I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says Adonai Yahweh, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. First Timothy 2, 4. Who will have all men be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth? Lamentations 3, 33. For he does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, as I live, says Adonai Yahweh, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And 2 Peter 3, 9. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise. As men count slackness, but is long, long suffering to us with, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We see Yahweh's heart there. He wants everybody to turn and come to him and be saved. It certainly is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the only way to be saved. Amen, Lee. So when we look at Yahusha, when he first came, we see that he did sit with sinners. And he told us that we'll be rejoicing in heaven over the repentance of one sinner. We read of this in Luke 15, verse 1 to 7. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the parashim and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And he spoke this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, 
does not leave the 99 into the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying and saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep which was lost. I say unto you, the likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents, more than ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And we see Yahshua came for the lost sheep, Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and sent him, I have not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Yasharel. Luke 19, 9 and 10. And Yahushua said unto them, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he is the son of Abraham. For the son of Adam is come to seek and to save that which is lost. And it's not just in the Brit Hadashah where this is spoken of. This coming and gathering was prophesied about in many scriptures. But we're just going to look at Ezekiel chapter 34, 11 to 16. For thus says Adonai Yahweh, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them in their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Yashrael by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. And he certainly is merciful. We, If we didn't have that mercy, if Yah is so loving and merciful, and um, when you take that away, you end up with some of these other religions that have an angry Elohim. They they have one that they've got to appease with certain things. You know, uh, our Elohim isn't about that appeasing. He's um, about love. Yahusha. He's about saving. Gave that sacrifice Certainly so did. that he that our sins could be atoned for and. And when we say we should keep the Torah, it's not out of earning our salvation. It's out of we do these things because we love him and because those were loving, kind instructions to help us live a blessed and happy mm. long life. It's all in Deuteronomy. It tells you yeah. do these things to be blessed, do these things you'll be cursed. Mm. And, and it, you bless we, you'll live, yeah. we follow his Torah because we love him. We John keep 14, his commandments 15. because we love him. If you love me, keep my commandments. Not because they earn us salvation. No, not at all. Verse 14, I will feed them in good pasture and upon the high mountains of Yashrael shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold. In the fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Yashrael. I will feed my flock. I will cause them to lie down, says Adonai Yahweh. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. I will bind up that which is broken. I will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And I will continue in this chapter, verses 19 to 24. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Therefore, this says Adonai Yahweh unto them, Behold, I, even I, I will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because you have thrust the side uh, with side and with shoulder and pushed all disease with your horns till you have shattered them abroad. Therefore, I will save my flock. And they shall be no more a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my shepherd David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Yahweh, have spoken of it. And we know that Yahusha was sent to call the sinner to repentance. Luke again. Chapter 5, verse 27 and 32. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up and followed him. Leaving my, Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But the scribes and parashim murmured against his Talmudim, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Yahushua answered, Answering, said unto them, Take your whole need, not a physician, but they they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 
Oh, just one minute, that was Catherine's laptop saying it's going to die. I plugged it in. There we go. See, I can't do two things at once. So in scripture, we are given some examples when people turn away from Yah and are punished. But when they turn back to Yah, repent and worship, they were forgiven. First, we'll look at Jonah. There are many examples. So we'll look at Jonah. So in Jonah, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with that unto Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. But Yahweh sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea that the ship was like to be broken. So Jonah knew that the tempest was because of his actions. End of chapter 1, verse 12, it says, And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calmed unto you. But I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. And we know that Yah prepared a great fish to swallow up. We see verse 17 now. Yahweh prepared a great fish to swallow up. Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. But in there he prayed, repented, and was saved. Chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Then Yonah prayed unto El Yahweh Elohei out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto El Yahweh, and he heard me. Out of the belly of Sheol cried I, and you heard my voice. And verse 10, and Yahweh spoke unto the fish, and it vomited out Yahweh, uh, Yonah on the dry land. We see that Yahushua called Paul, although he persecuted him and his people. Read of his conversion in Acts 9 and how he preached Yahweh following it. So I'm not going to go into all of it, but we see here in Acts chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. And straightway he preached Mashiach in the synagogues, and he is the son of Elohim. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Isn't this not he that destroyed them which were called on, the, on this name in Jerusalem, And came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. And we know that. Paul as well referred to himself as the chief of the sinners. 1 Timothy 1, 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Mashiach, Yahushua, came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So we see he was saved and he, as Yahushua, he referred to it himself. Why do you persecute me? And Yahushua tells us that all that come to him will be accepted and receive the same reward. We see this in the parable of the vineyard laborers. So in Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 onwards. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the market marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also to the vineyard, and whatsoever, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. And said unto him, Why stand ye here all day idle? They said unto him, Because no man is hiders. He says unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So when even was come, the Adonai of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and you have made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered them and said, Friend, I do you no wrong. But not you agree with for me with me for a penny? Take that at yours is and go your way. I will give unto you this last, even as unto you. It is not lawful for me to do what I will with my own. Is your eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. So we see how all those that came to work received the same payment no matter when they came to work for the owner, even those that came in the 11th hour received the same wage as those that came 
in the first. We know that this parable reflects the kingdom of Yahweh. And how all those that come to the Father that repent and turn from their ways will all be given this same reward of eternal life. We can see his mercy, this love and forgiveness of our Abba Yahweh in another parable as well. And this parable really has just been on me recently quite a lot. Luke 15, 11 onwards. And he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided them, divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when they had spent all their riotous living, Sorry. Definitely not righteous. <laughs> I said right, 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 righteous. Well, there like, you go. I it. said the right word just very wrong. It was definitely, <laughs> I didn't say righteous. I wasn't thinking he was righteous living. <laughs> and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he said and sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him I'm struggling to get my words out it's my fault. <laughs> and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and i perish with hunger i would arise and go to my father and i was saying to him father i've sinned against heaven and before you and i'm no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your hired servants and he rose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I love that. And the son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no more worthy to be called your son. And every time he prays, Yah, even those that come at the, at the last hour, that come with that heart, that circumcised heart, wanting to work and wanting to please the father, that accept Yahushua will be accepted. Don't you often feel like the prodigal son yourself? I know I do. Yeah, we've all had that life, haven't we? Yeah. But I just love that this this parable is just amazing. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so blessed to have you here with us. But the father said unto his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Your brother is come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve you, neither transgressed I at any time your commandment. And yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as your son was come, which was devoured your living with harlot, you have killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is yours. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and found. And we see he was dead. He was living that life of sin. And as we're told in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. So he was dead. But I just love how the father comes and just runs to him. Again, Yahweh's love and kindness is reflected in this parable. We see how the son was dead, given to that life of sin. However, when he returned to his father, he was accepted with rejoicing. His father ran to him, meet him. And when he turned, and when we turn back to Yah, when we leave our life of sin, Yah will run to meet us. Beautiful. Favourite psalm now. Let's read a bit from it. 103 verse 8 to 13. Yahweh is merciful and gracious, gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins or rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pities his children, so Yahweh pities them that fear him. Amen, Laura Lee, amen. And this psalm is just truly my favourite. Just 
it just encompasses and just shows us all that mercy and love and kindness that he has and how we do not deserve that mercy we do not deserve that forgiveness but he gives it to us because we are his children It certainly is, Rivka. It certainly is. And there's actually a there's a song, uh, there's a band at the moment I've been listening to called Exodus Row Band. They have their newer album and it's got a song on there. And after I'd done this study, because I had it, I did it a few weeks ago. After I'd done that study, we came across this band and their latest album literally has quite a few things from this study, songs about. So it's, I've been, uh, yeah. Exodus Row Band are, are wonderful. They do a lovely. Um, version of hallelujah of their own it's absolutely gorgeous isn't it yeah yeah it certainly is so what is required what must these people who are dead to sin do to be welcomed to the father we all know this second chronicle seven fourteen. if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins that is beautiful hear. what Lee's just written sorry to interrupt you babe but Yahusha's love for us is as wide as one scarred hand to the other. Isn't that gorgeous? It certainly is. That's lovely. Thank you very much for that. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek ye Yahweh while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Amen. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto El Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to our Elohim for he will abundantly pardon when we look at the now we'll look at the verses that we looked at from the beginning in Ezekiel and read more. So Ezekiel 18, 21 and 22. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins they is committed and guard my statutes and do which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All the all the trans, all his transgressions that he's committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. So we see there that. If they truly turn away, all that wickedness, all that sin will be forget forgotten. Same chapter, verse 28 and 27. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considers and turns away from his transgressions that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. We see that love, compassion of Yahweh there. And Ezekiel 18, 30 to 32. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Yahshua, everyone according to his ways, says Adonai Yahweh. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new ruach. For why will you die, O house of Yahshua? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says Adonai Yahweh. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. So we see that. Yahweh doesn't want to see anybody succumb to this death through sin. He wants to see everybody, everyone come to him. Every sinner he wants to see turn. He doesn't hate the sinner. He hates the sin. And that's what sometimes these people or just people in general that are living that life of sin need to realize. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. Repenting isn't about coming and groveling and, you know, saying, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's about turning around turning yeah. back walking on that narrow path getting back on the right path yeah you're on that life of sin you've turned away from the father you've turned away from that path like you said it's about turning around and getting turn back around. on track yeah test you turn around mm. but we are told there will be a time that comes when it is too late to repent isaiah 49 8 says thus says yahweh in an acceptable time have I heard you? And in the day of Yeshua, have I helped you? And I will preserve you and give you a covenant of the people to establish you, to establish the earth, to cause the inheritance, the desolate heritage. I'm not sure if I put that, meant to put that one in. Jeremiah 8.20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Meant to put that one in. <laughs> <laughs> so no one knows when Yahushua will return, so we must be ready. Luke 12.40 says, be ye therefore ready also for the son at son of Adam comes an hour when you think not. And we saw this with the first judgment of the earth with the flood. Yahushua tells us in Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knows no man nor the angels in heaven. Or not, not the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as of the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the son of Adam be. 
for as in that days they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of Adam be. And we can see connections with this in the parable of the virgins in Genesis 7, 16, it says, and they went in, went in male and female of all flesh as Elohim had commanded him and Yahweh shut him in. See, Yahweh shut the door behind them. In Matthew 25, 11 to 13, the parable of the virgins, we read, and while they went to bury, to buy, bury. Bury. the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgin, saying, Adonai, Adonai, open to us. And he answered them, saying, Amen, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of Adon comes. And we see that Rahab was saved from the destruction that was to come to Jericho. Have I got enough time? She turned her back on the city in which she lived, that city of idolatry and wickedness, to save the two spies. See us in chapter 2. But she had brought them up into the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the house. And the men pursued after them the way to the yard and to the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up to them upon the roof. And she said unto them, I know that Yahweh has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Continue, for you have heard, for we have heard how Yahweh dried up the waters of the Red Sea when you came out of Mitzrayim, and what you did to the two kings of the Emorim that were on the other side of the Yardon, Sichon and Og, which you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain anyone any more courage in any man because of you. For Yahweh Hakim, he is Elohim in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you swear seven oaths to me by Yahweh since I have showed you kindness that you will also show me kindness at my father's house and give me a true sign and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that I have and deliver our lives from death and the men answered her and said our life is yours if you utter not this our business and it shall be when Yahweh has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon the town hall town wall and she dwelt upon the wall. Don't know what's going on there. And we see this. Oh, oh so yeah. So in, in chapter six, then when the destruction comes, we see that she is saved. Uh, verse 22 to 25. But Yahusha said unto the two men that spied the country, go to the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all she has, as you swore seven oaths to her. And the young men that spied went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all she had. And they brought into all her kindred and left them without the camp of Yashrael. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessel of brass and iron, and put them in the treasury of the house of Yahweh. And Yahushua saved Rahab, the harlot alive in her father's household and all she had. And she dwelt in Yashrael even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Yahweh sent to spy out Yericho. So we see how she was saved. She turned from the city and she helped Yasharel. She helped them. She feared Yahweh. And we can see forgiveness by Yosef towards his brothers. Yosef's, bro Yosef's brothers would conspire against him and act wickedly. We see this in Genesis 37, 18 to 20. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer comes. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him in some pit. And we will say some evil beast about him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. So they were jealous of him. But when Joseph would later see his brothers and see that they had changed their ways and repented and were compassionate towards their brothers. We see this in Genesis 42, 20 to 24. When he's talking to him, but bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your words be verified. And ye shall not die. And they did, and they did so. And they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when we besought when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. 
and Reuben answered them, saying, Spoke I not unto you, saying, Did not sin against the do not sin against the child, and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, also this blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spoke unto them by an interpreter, and when he turned himself about from them and wept. We see here that they truly do feel bad for what they do. They did, they feel guilty, they have remorse for their actions. But when he reveals his true identity to his brothers, he would forgive them, he would embrace them, and he would provide for them. Chapter 45, verse 2, And he wept aloud, and the Mitzrayim of the house of Pharaoh heard, and Yosef said unto his brethren, I am Yosef, does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Yosef said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Yosef, your brother, whom you sold into Mitzrayim. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for Elohim did send me before you to preserve life. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near unto me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all you have. And there will I nourish you, for yet there are five years of famine, lest you and your household and all that have you come to poverty. And then we continue in verse 14. And he fell upon his brother in Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. More for he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. So we can see Yah and his character here in Yosef and how he will embrace and provide for us when we repent and turn to him. Zechariah 1, 2 and 3. Yahweh has been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore says you unto them, thus says Yahweh Sevaot. Turn ye unto me, says Yahweh Sevaot, and I will turn unto you, says Yahweh Sevaot. Isaiah 43 verse 25 and 6 and then continuing into 44 i even i am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake and will not remember your sins put me in remembrance let us plead together declare you that you may be justified verse 3 and 44 for i will pour water upon you that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my ruach upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring and they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water of course as we see that how he provides but what you were saying, we must remember that none of us is too far gone from Yahweh's forgiveness and mercy. If we have family members who are living sinful lives, we must continue to plant that seed and pray. When we see wickedness and abominations all around us, we must pray that Yah turns them to righteousness. James 5, 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and cover him I'm not convert. uh, and convert him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from its errors of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen. All over the place, but amen. So we, if ourselves are living in sin, believing that there is no hope for ourselves, we must repent and turn with all our heart to Yah, and he'll forgive us. We are all sinners and fall short of that glory of Yah, but Yahushua died so that we could all be saved. Acts 3.19, repent ye therefore and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. And the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of Yahweh. First John 1 19. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Yahweh is our loving Abba, who wants all his children to return. Oh, us praise Yah. You must not forget that. Lamentations. 3 22 and 23. I just love this verse. It is of Yahweh's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And Micah 7, 18 to 20. Who is an L like unto you that pardons iniquity and passes by transgressions of the remnant of his heritage? He retains not his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will turn again and will have compassion upon us and he will subdue our iniquities and you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will perform the truth of Jacob and the mercy of Abraham which you have sworn seven oaths unto our fathers from the days of old. And I'm just now going to end it with Yahushua's crucifixion. And that is crucifixion. Um, we must remember that he forgave that criminal that was next. In Luke 23, verse 39 to 43. And one of the criminals which were hanged, railed on him saying if you be hamashiach save yourself and us 
But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do not you fear, Elohim, seeing you are in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Yahushua, Adonai, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Yahushua said unto him, Amen. I say unto you this day, you shall be with me in paradise. So hallelujah. And I just want to end on this one because on a personal note, um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but my father, uh, about nine years ago now, nine and a half years ago now, took his own life. Um, he was in uh, in the army from the age of 16. He was in the Falklands War along many others, and he struggled with uh, PTSD. And um, so we didn't know what was going on as a family, and he, he did take his own life. And this, he, he didn't walk with Yar. I didn't know Yar at that time. We were very much in the world, and he was a drunkard. <laughs> oh, cramp! <laughs> <laughs> and he, so you know, I um, he he very much walked away. He wasn't walking in that righteous path with Yah, and didn't know Yah. But this brings me comfort because I always feel like when he was sat there alone before he did finally um, go to sleep, shall we say? I just. I believe that Yahushua would have came to him and given him that opportunity and that he would have had that chance to accept it. And um, this just brings me so much comfort. I just feel like this is a great way to to end it, really, that, you know, no one is ever too far gone. No one's ever too far gone. So always just just spread that truth and love of, of Yahweh and Yahushua and be that light to, to other people and and hopefully convert someone to the truth so that was very quick i'm sorry for the time we haven't yeah, got left beautiful and thank you for sharing with us all you yeah. know you yeah. are a blessing and you don't even know it but mm -hmm. you really truly are and so we just want to thank everybody for being with us tonight remember if you're watching on lab if you want to catch us next week then you're going to need to go and subscribe to facebook or youtube or yeah wherever you will find us somewhere. Go take a look around. <laughs> so we'll say Shabbat Shalom to Shabbat everybody. Shalom. Thank you all for and joining we, us. We hope that you have a wonderful Sabbath and a peaceful Yah filled time. So thank you for being with us. And pray and praise praise Yah, Laura Lee, praise him for, for saving you. He truly is a blessing. So take us out with the show, Farley. So we hope to see you next week on our YouTube or on Heart of the Tribe YouTube. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow. Let's talk to her. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>